Hey guys, today we are going to go through section 2 of chapter 1, which is focusing on solving now multi-step equations. Yesterday for our notes we went through just single step equation solving, so that was using our inverse operations for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Today we're going to expand that and look at solving equations that might have more than one of those inverse operations happening in the problem. Before we get started on actually solving multi-step equations, I want to take just a couple of minutes to talk through and remind ourselves how we can simplify expressions, because that's going to be a big part of this section, is just looking at different ways that we can simplify an expression so that each side of our equation is as simplified as possible, and then we'll go about solving it using our inverse operations. So here in box one, I'm just going to go through a couple of warm-ups with you, reminders for how we can simplify an expression. So looking at number one here, I have two parentheses that are being subtracted from each other. Now what I have to remember here is that when it's a parenthesis, I'm going to simplify inside that parenthesis first, and then work on combining them together. Now looking at our two parentheses, inside each parenthesis we don't have any like terms. Remember that just means I have the same exponent on the same base. What I'm going to have to do for this one is get rid of my parentheses so that I can take each of my four different terms in this expression and combine them together. Because you can see I do have some commonalities. I do have an x squared term and an x squared term. I have an x term and an x term. But because they're locked in those parentheses, I can't combine them together. The way that I can get rid of parentheses is with distribution. Remember, distribution just means we're multiplying whatever's on the outside of that parenthesis into everything in that parenthesis. That's a little bit tricky here because I don't see anything on the outside of my parentheses. Out in front here, kind of imagine in front of the first parenthesis, there's actually an invisible one. And then in front of this second parenthesis, there's still a one because anytime we have a uh, multiplication happening, if I don't see that coefficient, it is still just a 1 there. So what I'll have to do is basically multiply the first parenthesis by 1, which we should know multiplying by 1 doesn't change the value. So this first parenthesis I can just write without those parentheses. My second one does change though, because now I'm multiplying by a negative 1. So basically what's going to happen is that second parenthesis, both of my signs are going to change. So if I multiply negative 2x squared plus 3x by a negative 1, that's now going to become a positive 2x squared. And now that's going to be a negative 3x, so minus 3x. Now that all of my parentheses are gone, I can just collect my like terms with what's in common. So those same ones that I highlighted before, my 2x squared and my 2x squared can get collected together. So in total... That's 4x squared. And then my x's, negative 6x and negative 3x, give me a total of negative 9x. For number 2, I have a number, a value, outside of my parentheses. So now I'm going to distribute that first, and then collect my like terms wherever possible. So remember, when I'm distributing something, I have to multiply it into everything inside that parentheses. So in this case, I'm going to be multiplying my 3 times 2y, which gives me 6y, and 3 times negative 3, which gives me a negative 9. Now with my parentheses gone, my plus 5 is still there, and now I just collect my like terms. Now my 6y is the only term with y in it. My other two terms are both constants. They're just numbers, so I can collect those together. In this case, negative 9 and positive 5 gives me a total of negative 4. So my answer ends up being 6y minus 4. So for box 2, I do want you to try this on your own first before you go ahead and play the video. So go ahead, pause the video, do those two problems on your own, and once you're ready, go ahead and hit play, and I'll walk you through the rest of it. All right, now that you've got those two done, let's take a look and see whether you got it right or not. For number 3, I've got another case where I have two parentheses, and I have to get rid of those parentheses. The nice thing here is that it's addition in between, and I don't have any numbers on the outside. So really, I'm just multiplying a 1 into each of those parentheses, so my values inside are just going to stay the same. So I end up just with 
2h plus 5 plus 5h minus 3. Because none of my signs are going to change because it was just positive on the outside. Collecting up my like terms gives me 7h plus 2. Number 4 is a little bit trickier because I have a parenthesis I have to handle first. I have to get rid of that parenthesis before I can collect my like terms. But the thing that's on the outside of my parenthesis is a little deceiving. Because most people will just see this 7 as the thing that's outside my parenthesis. But really, my sign has to get included as well. So what I'm going to have to distribute here in my parenthesis is actually a negative 7. So the way that I'll handle this, I'm going to start by distributing that negative 7 into my parenthesis. So in that first step, 14 doesn't change. It's still there out in front. Now negative 7 times z is negative 7z. Negative 7 times t positive 2 is a negative 14. So now I have a positive 14. I have a negative 14. When I add those together, I get 0, which means all I'm left with is just negative 7z. All right, so we're done with boxes 1 and 2. We've gone through and reminded ourselves of just kind of how we simplify expressions. And now let's go ahead and apply that idea to some equation solving. So in box three, we're gonna go ahead and start solving a multi-step equation. Now with these, like I had mentioned earlier, one method that you can do is to simplify each side of your equation first and then worry about the inverse operations. So in the case of number five, I have five F plus four F minus eight equals 19. And on the left side of my equation here, both of my two terms with f in it can be combined together. Now with this, because both of my f terms are on the same side of the equation, I can just add those together. I don't need to do inverse operations. That's a really common mistake that people do because they think, oh, I'm working with an equation. I have to you know, add 4 on this side, so I have to add 4f on the other side. But that's only the case when you're adding something that's not already there. In this case, my 5f and my 4f just get combined together. So I end up with 9f minus 8 equals 19. From here, that's as far as we can simplify each side of my equation. So now we've got 9f minus 8 equals 19. Now when we're solving a multi-step equation, remember, it's still an equation. We're still trying to isolate my variable. To start with, I'm going to focus on the left side of my equation and get anything that doesn't have f attached to it moved over to the other side. I'm going to get that away. So in this case, my minus 8 over on the left side is what I'm going to deal with first. If I'm doing inverse operations, I'm going to go ahead and add 8 on both sides. That cancels out on the left side. I'm left with 9f on the left and a total of 27 on the right. So looking at this problem now, on the left side, I have 9 times f. So if I'm trying to get f by itself, the inverse of multiplying by 9 would be dividing by 9. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 9. That gives me f equals 3. With complicated equations like this, it's especially important that you check your answer. And when you do that, you need to make sure that you're taking that number, that value that you found for the variable, and plugging it back into the original equation. So my original equation was 5f plus 4f minus 8 equals 19. So I'm just going to rewrite that problem, but with 3 instead of f. So 5 times 3 plus 4 times 3 minus 8 is supposed to equal 19. If that equation is true with 3 in there, then we know it's a solution. So now I'm just going to go ahead and simplify this. 5 times 3 is 15. 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 8 equals 19. And now I'm just going to work left to right. 15 plus 12 is 27. Minus 8 is supposed to equal 19, which in this case, it does. So that means 3 is the correct solution to that equation. Moving over to box four, again, we're going to look at a multi-step equation, but for this one, it involves distribution instead of just collecting like terms. So for number six in box four, the equation that we're given is four times parenthesis n minus six minus one equals 31. Now I am going to show you two different options on how you can handle this problem, and it really just depends on your personal preference and what order you like to go in. So for option one, I'm going to go ahead and show you 
distributing first. So if the first thing you see is parentheses and you want to get rid of those parentheses, your first step here should be multiplying 4 into this parenthesis. So when you do that, 4 times n is 4n, 4 times negative 6 is a negative 24, and then after your parenthesis, I still have minus 1 on that side equals 31. From here, it's just like box 3. I'm going to go ahead and collect up my like terms as far as I can. On the left side, 4n minus 25, and that still equals 31. Now it's a regular multi-step equation. I'm going to get rid of the term on the left side that doesn't have my variable in it. So I'm going to add 25 on both sides. 25s cancel out on the left side. 4n equals 56. Then I'm going to go ahead and divide by 4 on both sides to get n all the way by itself, and I end up with n equals 14. If you don't like dealing with parentheses and you want to push it off until the end of the problem, we do have another th option for you. Option 2 here is to handle all the other stuff outside the parentheses first, and then deal with what's inside the parentheses at the end. So my first step here is actually going to be adding 1 on both sides, because that's not involved with the parentheses at all. That leaves me with 4 times n minus 6 equals 32. From here, I could distribute my 4 if I wanted to at this point, or I could follow all the way through and try and get just my parentheses by itself on the left side of my equation. That actually works nicely in this case, because if I divide by 4 on both sides, 32 is a multiple of 4, so I'd end up with n minus 6 equals 8, because 32 divided by 4 is 8. And then it's a simple add 6 on both sides to get n equaling 14. So that's it. That's 1.2. That's solving multi-step equations. Uh, as always, feel free to rewatch this if I talked too quickly, or if you missed something as you were taking notes. Uh, if you have any questions, just make sure you come ready with that Monday morning, because what we're going to be working on is page 16, 4 through 34, just the evens. If you want to start working on those and want to take a look at some of those problems, feel free to give them a look. Um, but again, that's what we'll be spending our time on in class on Monday. So that's all I got for you. Have a fantastic day and weekend, and I'll see you guys on Monday.